But Jesus ain't concerned about hitting on her. He wants to get her business straight. Why do you think she answered? I have no husband. So y'all, y'all read stuff, but you don't read it. She was probably saying to herself, he looked like a pretty good candidate. Oh, who you, you with around here? I'm just traveling through. Oh, just traveling through. You don't know my business then, do you? You don't know who I am and what I'm about. I have no husband. But Jesus knew her business. That was the reason why he went through Samaria, because he wanted to get in her business and straighten her out. And I thought I'd tell us tonight that he knows all of our business. The stuff your spouse don't know, God knows. The stuff your mom and daddy don't know, young folks, God knows. And we have to know tonight that no matter what answer we give to whatever question, we're going to have to always answer to God. You might fool some of the people some of the time, and you might fool me all of the time, but you can never fool God none of the time. He knows. He knows your business. He knew her business. But she brings up worship, and that's all right. Because Jesus saith unto her, woman, verse 21, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Why? Because there will not be just a centralized location, a place to come to worship him. Because now, he says, ye worship Ye know not what. We know what we worship for. Salvation is of the Jew. But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Not by ritual. But by spirit and in truth. The Father seeketh folk like that to worship him. You ain't got to come in sprinkling dust. Shaking your beads and looking around and Holy Father this and Holy Father that. This is what it's all about. Worshiping in spirit and in truth. Your spirit must connect with the spirit of God. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's not about the physical body. It's about the spiritual being. And then the woman saith unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. I am the one. If you knew the gift of God and who it was that asked if you for a drink, you would give it to me because you would know that I am the Messiah. And here she is now. And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? And then in verse 28, the woman then left her water pot, and went her way into the city, and said to the men, <coughs> I said, say it to the men. Is that the way your Bible reads? And she said to the men, Come see a man. Those men who possibly had relationships with her. She didn't go trying to find folks she didn't know. She dealt with the men who she knew. And she went and told the men, come see a man because if this man can expose my business, then you need your business exposed. She left a water pot because she had a testimony. 
She had some business that she needed to take care of now because her business is all straight now because the master now has dealt with her and now she wants folks who have problems in their life and have messed up business to come to the man who can straighten them out. Come see a man who's told me everything about me. Do you have a testimony tonight? Do you have a testimony that says my business was really messed up, but the Lord straightened me out? He's a mighty, mighty good God. And in the midst of your embarrassment, of your failures and things that have gone wrong in your life, he will embrace you as a friend. And then he will encourage you by giving you forgiveness. He gave this woman forgiveness. Something nobody else could give her, but he gave it to her. That's the kind of friend Jesus is. No matter how messed up your life is, no matter how messed up your business is, he can set things in order. But you've got to be willing to let him get in your business. See, I don't care if you don't let me in. Because I got enough business of my own and I got enough folk who volunteer to tell me their business. I don't have to go looking for nobody's business to get into. I don't have to try to follow members around and see where they're going. That, that, that's just crazy. I don't, I, look, after you leave that building, you grown, you go where you want to go. And you got to know who's watching you. But I've got enough business of my own. And I think you've got enough business of your own. But you can't straighten your business out. You've got to let Jesus get in your business. And it's best to let him in. Because he'll look beyond your faults. And he will satisfy each and every need that you have. She was having a problem with me and she was thirsting for. But now, that need has been satisfied because she's met the man, Jesus the Christ. And when you meet the man, you don't have to worry about other men. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I put my red dress on with my red pumps and my red hat. Go to Red Lobster, sit up and eat me a meal by my lonesome. Get in my red Mustang and go back home and be just as happy and content as I can. Yeah, when you come to know the man. And my brother, when you come, when you come to know the man, my brother, he's satisfied. You don't have to keep giving up your paycheck every week and hoping that she loves you and wondering if she really care about you and you got to buy this and buy that and you broke all the time looking sideways, walking sideways. When you come in contact with Jesus, you don't worry about that anymore. You dedicate your life to Christ and live for him and he'll set you up. And you come in contact with a man and you allow him to get in your business. Yes, I'm here tonight to tell you, you'll be better off yes, as you live in this life. The message is yours tonight. Are you willing to let him get in your business and straighten it out now? Or do you want him to expose your business on the day of judgment? And if you don't deal with it now, he'll expose it before this life is over. Yes, you know, there are some of us who are creeping and creeping and tipping and doing and dodging and dipping and ducking and stuff like that. You think you've gotten away and you're handing the cookie jar and he's just sitting there, sitting there watching you. And he's saying to you, straighten up. Set your house in order. That's what he told Hezekiah. Set your house in order. For you're going to die. All of us are going to die. But is your life in order tonight? Is your business straight with the Lord? And if not tonight, say, Lord, I'm coming home. I wondered 
far away from the fold of God, but tonight I'm going to come home. I'm going to help this revival. I'm, I'm going to be a better member here at 10th and M. I'm going to be a better member wherever I attend because I want the Lord's work to grow and to flourish, and I don't want to hinder the Lord's work at my particular congregation. I want to work with the leadership. I want to work with other members because